In this video, I'm going to look at uh, three uh, binomial expansion questions, which are a little bit more difficult um, for the year 12 um, specification. Okay, question number one then. Um, write down the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of a plus bx to the power of 5. Okay, ascending powers of x, so it means we need to increase the powers of x. So we're going to start with x to the 0, um, because we want to increase the powers of x. Um, so I'm going to say that's um, 5c0, a to the 5, bx to the 0, plus 5c1, a to the 4, bx to the 1, plus 5c2, a cubed, bx squared. <clears throat> Of course, you don't need to write 5c0 and bx to the 0 because they're just both 1. So you could uh, negate those, but I'll put those in just um, so you can see the complete pattern uh, of the binomial coefficients. Um, so that's the number 1. That's a to the 5, and that's the number 1. So we have a to the 5 as our first term. Uh, 5c1, that's just 5. Uh, a to the 4 uh, times bx to the 1. So that's going to be um, 5 a to the 4 bx and then 5c2 is the number 10 so you can either get that using the, the choose function on the calculator or the factorial definition or Pascal's triangle um, however you do it you, you'll arrive at the number 10 uh, so it's going to be plus 10 a cubed b squared x squared don't forget the squared there affects the b as well as the x. Okay, so that answers part A. Um, this here is the first three terms in ascending powers, okay, increasing powers of x of this um, binomial expansion. Okay, part B. Given that the coefficient of x is 3240 and the coefficient of x squared is 17,280, find the values of A and B. Okay. So what we're going to be doing now is we're equating um, the two bits of information we've been given to give us a pair of simultaneous equations in A and B. Um, so first things first, that's my coefficient of x. OK, and we're told that the coefficient of x is 3240. So that tells us that 5 a to the power of 4 times b, okay, we ignore the x because it's the coefficient of x, is equal to 3240. Okay, so that's one equation which relates a and b. The second bit of information says the coefficient of x squared, which we know is 10a cubed b squared, that is equal to 17,280. So that gives us a second piece of information, which relates a and b. So we get 10a cubed b squared is equal to 17,280. So all that remains now is to solve this pair of simultaneous equations uh, to find the values of a and b. Okay, There's a number of different ways that you can do this. Uh, the way that I'm going to choose to do it is I am going to square the top one so that both terms have a b squared in them. And then I'm going to divide by um, uh, one by the other. <clears throat> so to take the top one, I'm going to get uh, 5 squared is 25. a to the 4 squared, well that's a to the 8. And b squared is b squared. And then I need to square the 3,240, which is something I don't know off the top of my head. There we go. And the calculator so it tells us it's 10,497,600. And now what I've got here is these two lines both contain a b squared. So I can divide one by the other. I'm just going to notate here what I've done is I've squared both sides of the equation. <clears throat> um, now, dividing one by the other, I'm going to divide the bottom one by the top one um, because um, I'll, I'll get an a to the 5. Whereas if I divided the um, top one by the bottom one, I'd get a to the minus 5. Um, so 25 divided by 10 is 2.5. 
a to the 8 divided by a cubed is a to the 5. Um, b squared divided by b squared is 1. That's why I've squared it in the first place. And then I need to take this number and divide it by 17,280. So that gives me 607.5. Divide both sides by 2.5. That gives me 243. And then if I take the fifth root of that, okay, so that's the power of 0 0.2, I will get the answer 3. Okay, so A is 3. And now that I've got the value of A, I plug it back into one of these two to find the value of B. So this implies that B is 3,240 divided by 5 times 3 to the 4. Okay, so let's use, let's use the top one here. Uh, so 3,240 divided by 5 times 81 gives me that B is the number 8. And what I would just do is just check to make sure that works with the bottom one. Uh, so in my calculator, just in case I made an error, I'm going to type in 10 multiplied by a cubed. Well, a is 3, so it's 3 cubed times b squared. I've got b squared, um, uh, b is 8. Uh, so that should equal 17,280, uh, which it does. Uh, so that confirms to me that I've not made any errors in my calculation. Uh, so in conclusion... Uh, a is 3 and B is 8. Okay, uh, So that's how you go about doing one of those questions. Um, that's probably one of the harder ones of, of those. Um, occasionally you're given perhaps one unknown. So it's not a pair of simultaneous equations. It's just an equation. Um, but this kind of question can be on spec. Um, so just um, take note of how, how I've done that. Okay, that's example number one. Two more to go. Uh, the first one, fairly easy one, uh, especially in relation to the first one. Um, this isn't looking for an expansion. It's looking for one term of an expansion. Um, so what you don't want to be doing is you don't want to be calculating all eight terms to then say, oh, I just want this one. Uh, you just want to jump in with the single term that you want. So this says, find the coefficient of x to the 5 in the expansion of 2 minus 3x to the power 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to force out the term I want. I want x to be to the power 5. So I want, therefore, minus 3x to be to the power 5. Now, I have to choose seven items because I have seven brackets, and I have to choose one item from each bracket. So therefore, I must be choosing 2 from the other two brackets. And the other step I need to do is I need to multiply that by how many combinations there are of choosing five three x's from the seven brackets. And we notate that as seven C five. Alternatively, you could write that as seven C two. It's exactly the same number. OK, seven C two and seven C five are the same number uh, because the number of ways of choosing two two uh, two twos from the seven brackets is going to be the same as the number of ways of choosing five three x's from the seven brackets. And that's reflected uh, using the line of symmetry in Pascal's triangle. OK, so 7c5, um, we're going to calculate that one. So you can either use the calculator. Um, I quite like using the factorial definition just to keep my mind fresh. Um, so that's 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 7 minus 5 factorial, which is 2 factorial. Uh, the top then is going to be 7 times 6 times 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 2, because 2 factorial is 2. And then we can see that the 5 factorial top and bottom will cancel. And then the two, 6 and the 2 will cancel to make a 3. So I've got 7 times 3. So the answer to that is 21. So my coefficient then of x to the 5 is going to be the 21 from the 7c5 times by the 4, which is 2 squared, times by minus 3 to the power of 5. I don't need to put x to the 5 because the question has just asked for the coefficient of x to the 5, not the x to the 5 term. OK, so I've done put that into the calculator. So it's going to be 21 times 4 times minus 3 to the power of 5. OK, so I've typed all that in. 21 times 4 times minus 3 to the 5. And that is giving me the answer, minus 20,412. And that is my answer, minus 20,412.
412. Okay, so when a question asks for a particular coefficient, just look at that term. Don't bother expanding the whole thing. Just look at that term. And my final example, uh, number three. <clears throat> Oops. Find the constant term in the expansion 2x plus uh, 1 over x to the power 8. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just consider well, which term is going to be constant. I'm going to have 2x to the power of something, and I'm going to have 1 over uh, x uh, times uh, 8 minus that something. Because I've got to have 8 items altogether. Um, <clears throat> as for what number n is, well, I need to decide, well, if I've got x to the n and... Uh, 1 over 8 minus n, it's like 1 over x to the 8 minus n, what a value of n is going to make that a constant? Oh, well, that's just, you might be able to spot it if you can, great, go with it. But if not, then we're going to be looking at uh, 2 to the n, x to the n, divided by x to the 8 minus n. Um, and then I can do times indices minus. So that's going to be 2 to the n times x to the n minus 8 plus n, because I'm minusing minus n, which is 2 to the n times x to the 2n minus 8. So if I want this to be constant, then I need the, curve, uh, the power of x to be 0. So this is going to tell me that 2n minus 8 will equal 0. This tells me that n is 4. Okay, n is 4. And that makes sense because if I have x to the 4 on top of the fraction and x to the 4 on the bottom, then they're going to cancel out. Okay, And if you can spot that n is 4 from that, then by all means just jump into it. But that's the kind of algebra um, that's running behind it. Okay, so I want the term... Um, uh, the, the, the fourth term in, in this, or well, fifth term in this expansion. Um, so that's going to give me 2x to the power 4, uh, 1 over x to the power 4, and then how many ways are there of doing that? Well, it's 8c4. Okay. Um, so 8c4 is going to be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, divided by 4 times 3 times 2. So that's the number 70. Uh, 2 to the 4, well, that's 16. Um, technically, 16x to the 4. And this one, there's no constant in there except for the number 1. So that's just um, x to the minus 4. And we see we get 70 times 16, which is 1,120. So that's the constant term. Um, if you were to fully expand uh, this expansion... Um, then um, I roll over the next page. If you were to fully expand it, you'd have uh, you'd have something times x to the eight plus something else. I'm going to call it uh, b times x to the six plus something else times x to the four plus something else times x squared plus and then there's our constant in the middle, which was one thousand one hundred and twenty. And then coming out the other side, you'd have something else, plus x to the minus 2, plus f e to the minus 4, plus g e to the minus 6. Oh, e, no, x. And then plus h x to the minus 8. And to the first four terms, um, we'll have positive powers of x. And then the, the latter four terms will have negative powers of x. And the term bang in the middle is constant. Okay, so that's what the full expansion would look like um, um, for that. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, again, if you have any binomial expansion questions, please pop them in the comments and I will uh, try and answer them for you. Um, otherwise, stay tuned for more videos.